Hi, welcome everyone to this year's and first ever, I guess, uh, you know, so State of the Union. And let's wait a moment for. <laughs> uh, hello. Hello. Yeah, it's green. Yes, it's green. Does does anyone can everybody hear me? Okay. Cool. Uh, just a quick advice for the older ones in the room. The talk is called State of the Union, but I'm afraid there won't be any Hitler references. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> okay. So, so yeah. of yeah. course, like the like the big elephant in the room over the last couple of years has been valence support. So this is like the big item where most of the changes have happened. <coughs> and yeah, there's been, for example, very large and painful refactors in output handling carried on by Jonas Sobal. Uh, I always, I'm always afraid that I misspell his surname. <laughs> but yeah, well, uh, it's been really long work that uh, has been happening during the last year and a half or almost two years. Uh, and it's been uh, well, he, he, it has enabled us to uh, to do some really neat things that were necessary. But uh, yeah, the, these first these uh, refactors were necessary uh, in order to make things fit in easily and and nicely. So, for example, so the first thing that happened thanks to that was uh, per output scaling, mm. which essentially means if you have two monitors that have different, well, one is high uh, HIDPI and the other one is not, you don't have to choose between having everything huge on one monitor or everything tiny on the other, but you can have like the correct scaling on, on both monitors. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so next thing that uh, is still being worked on uh, it would be fractional scaling so you don't actually have to use uh, on high dpi monitors these two uh, by two uh, pixel squares uh, so you can actually use 1.5 scaling on this monitor so you can make better use of the space without losing some <laughs> of the nice things of high dpi monitors <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, another thing that has been happening on uh, during the last year and something uh, has been drawing tablet support. Uh, it's uh, been uh, the configuration has been largely refactored in order to cater for X11 and Wayland. Many things have moved to matter. You know, Satan's demon is mm, well a lot less responsible, almost none. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, and the control center obviously takes care of the UI issues, but uh, many things have been moving to matter in order to make uh, the configuration for X11 and Wayland happen in one single place. And of course, this, this has enabled us to uh, add the Wayland support for drawing tablets and whatnot, uh, which works seamlessly. Uh, well. Past a few rough uh, uh, releases, but I it's been I it's working nicely already. As part of that, it was that the configuration UI is now implemented in GNOME Shell. <laughs> yeah, this is, for example, one of the things that uh, would be a GNOME settings daemon would be responsible, but it's not anymore. As they say, it's been uh, fixed with more than a thousand words. Mm. This is how it looks like. Yeah. And I must say, I was really impressed because um, we wanted, for a screenshot, we wanted to use like the default 
backgrounds that Jakob did and only I had those on my, on my laptop. So uh, I took those the screenshot on my laptop. I have never used a tablet before. So it was really just plugging it in and it worked. So <laughs> good job. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this happened. Next, <laughs> next one. <laughs> okay. There was also some stuff going on on the on the user visible side. So one thing is that the top line GNOME shell now is transparent. Yay! Um, but only if there aren't any maximized windows. So <laughs> now maxima uh, maximization effects and tiling effects are animated. Uh, Cosmo implemented animations for the full screen transitions a while ago. Now uh, Alessandro Bono implemented this for uh, maximization and tiling as well. This is now not really news anymore, but uh, it happened since last Friday, so that the notification and calendar was redesigned. Ah, is Federico in the room? <laughs> <laughs> because this isn't a mock-up or a fake. <laughs> it's his birthday today, so happy birthday, Federico. <laughs> 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 Search did also see some refinements of uh, the cycle. So if I search for Wadi, uh, results are now more compact. You fit more results and uh, also highlight like the search terms in the, mm -hmm. in the description. And for some reason, if I search for Wadi, I get like election results from the British Parliament election. <laughs> from Epiphany. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, and there's also been changes to the unresponsive uh, application dialog. It was previously implemented uh, with Sanity. Uh, it didn't quite work, if I remember correctly, with Wayland applications uh, because you couldn't reparent on top of a non X window, basically. So it's been made uh, cell. UI and sell Chrome and and well I it's better integrated right now and this is how it looks right now yeah and there's of course uh, some areas of development uh, things are never quiet uh, over this front so yeah, the first thing it would be, uh, this is a summer of code project. Uh, Armin, well, he, he, he couldn't come to this WADEC, but he's uh, still in our hearts. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, he's working o on making, well, the final objective, the ideal objective would be being able to uh, spawn uh, Genome Cell without an x Wayland server and being able to, expo to spawn the x Wayland server whenever it's necessary, whenever you're launching a next application and whatnot. Uh, this is a very large project, obviously, so the only fix for, the, uh, for this Summer of Code project is uh, making it able to uh, start uh, Genome Shell uh, without x Wayland, which would be a, a huge win, at least for GDM and, and pure Wayland use cases, etc. Yes. Right now, if we ex experiment crashes, True. the session <laughs> goes down. True. Yeah. Which Ideally, th that would be handled as well. And you would only see the X11 applications vanishing, but your session would uh, still survive. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that this is one rough area. The startup notification, we supposedly have a protocol, but it doesn't quite work without some hacks. Uh, well, right now it's basically, it's, it's implemented in Mate, but the GNOME shell side is 
still relies on on X11 uh, startup notification. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a hack in Fedora to make it work, which is basically uh, emit an X11 startup notification event mm -hmm. from the Valent code <coughs> to make it work in GNOME Shell. But mm -hmm. obviously, this has to be done properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then this is more work from Jonas, uh, having support for screencasting and desktop sharing and RDP. Uh, yeah, well, he's been carrying on with these branches for quite some time, but they should eventually be done and merged at some point. So this is essentially everyone, every time you mention Wayland, someone will come up and complain that, oh, but it doesn't do yeah. remote X. This is a fix for that. Yeah. The next one is tiling. Uh, George has been working on uh, like a more featureful tiling in the cycle and we're hoping to, to merge it so that you don't only can like tile windows side by side, 50% of the screen, but adjust like the, the area that is tiled, you can resize the window and you can also do quarter tiling for your terminals mm. because it's only used for terminals. Okay, so uh, this is really a mock-up right now, but uh, somehow people got hold of it and it has been discussed. So probably best to mention it. Uh, so this is how GNOME Shell looks right, right now. And there are some ideas to make it look more like this. So that is remove the dash from the regular overview always has the workspace feature hidden and delegate applications to a separate view. Um, like right now there's a prototype as a, an extension, but it's really just that. It's a prototype <coughs> that we want to use to well, basically throw back and forth ideas with uh, designers, evaluate <coughs> the idea, and yeah, maybe something will come out. I mean, we want to make it pretty clear that it, this is a playground kind of thing. So it's uh, an experimentation point. So nothing here will be definitively like this, maybe. But things are being experimented. And this was quick. <laughs> 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 So any questions? Does the, uh, the fractional scaling, does it uh, affect pointer movement? Because right now I think you're scaling it up based on the, the fact of the monitor. Does that, is that the same number you're scaling with or is it a different one? Yeah. Uh, we currently just multiply by two on, on high DPI, so yeah, it should just multiply by the proper uh, output scale. It isn't a physical, uh, that, that kind of physical movement, uh, a hard to reach fold anyway. I mean, uh, with mixed DPIs, it, it would be really bad already because of different monitor sizes. Even, on, I mean, on a high DPI screen, you on a laptop, you have an 11 inch.
So I know that this will be a question that will be asked by others, so I preemptively ask it. Um, are there uh, performance improvements planned for the shell? I know. <laughs> uh, also, if anyone is interested in um, the uh, performance improvements of the shell, should come to the buff on. It's Monday. I think so. Yes. So. Hello. Um, the Zen overview. I know it's a. Uh, playground uh, at the moment and some ideas. Uh, I was wondering what's the, the motivation and the goal behind it? What uh, problem are we trying to solve or what are we trying to achieve with it? Um, okay, so um, it would be best answered, I suppose, by the designers, but uh, as far as I can see, well, one is that uh, uh, windows in the, in the overview are like more easily to but uh, the more space you give to Windows, the easier they are to identify. And in the end, switching between Windows is one of the primary tasks there. Um, also, the Dash is somehow limited. I mean, we do like uh, adjust to more items that are added there by shrinking the icons at some point. And I suppose you can fit like about 20, 25 <coughs> items, but if you have like a Basically, you make the Dash a full screen application view, then you actually fit more uh, space in there that is like customizable by, by the user. Um, it also has, like the mockups has some overlap with stuff that Envis is doing. So there would be like an opportunity to, to share code, like to, to cooperate with Envis and take something from their implementation. Um, I think that's those are the main points. Hi there. Um, I've seen that there's a, uh, some level of convergence between GTK4 and Clutter, and I'm wondering if there's a roadmap for migrating the shell in that sense, or is that a, a silly question? I haven't really followed it too closely. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Oh. So on, on the Wayland, one of the, the problems you're running into is that the input events don't get processed while you're rendering or while you're busy processing processing and you're rendering. Um, do you have any plans? Ah, sorry. Um, so on the Wayland, one of the problems Mata seems to have is that it doesn't process input events while it's rendering. Do you have any plans for adding the thread or anything like that for that? It's complicated. Um, so there are two problems there. One, there is a lot of reentrancy. Um, the code does not the code that handles events does not expect to be called from different threads. And on top of that, you have JavaScript, which is a single-threaded language, uh, which means that you really don't want reentrancy on threads. Um, but yeah, the idea would be to now that Clutter is not a client-side toolkit and it's owned by the shell entirely, um, there can be adjustments to be made to the, the internal API 
um, from a toolkit perspective, uh, processing events uh, that will not be displayed is pointless. Um, so it's all frame compressed. But yeah, the, the only thing uh, you need to care about is your table integration needs anything yeah. specified. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But that is a compositor requirement, not a client side requirement. So it needs to be changed now that it's part of a compositor. Uh, about what you said about like launching X Wayland on demand, I'm wondering like Wayland is very good in terms of separa separation of applications, and is there any chance that we will at some point be able to have a separate X Wayland uh, process for each X application? So right now, um, when using X11, we are kind of shielded of crashes of GNOME Shell matter, because if it happened to crash for any reason, you don't lose the entire session. Uh, but as soon as we switch to Whalen, if by chance or not chance, uh, Whalen, no, no, sorry, um, GNOME Shell crashes, you lose everything. Is there any way we could work around that in the in the future? No, work around, no. um, it's mostly a toolkit application problem. Um, I mean, GTK, for instance, doesn't handle it X dice. X dice, X applications usually go with it, and the same is happening on Wayland, except mm. that on Wayland, like GNOME Shell is still the state driven. Um, it should be possible to, to do something, but I think then it would have to be like a <coughs> By the way, the room for the Hackfest on Monday you may want to consider using another one. The the room for the Hackfest on Monday is full. Uh, I think it would be worth uh, considering uh, another room. There is already one uh, empty that you could use. There is 10 people and the room Are you are you planning to implement like um, I want to say advanced Wayland uh, um, interfaces like the viewporter, the presentation time, and DMA buff in the short term?
Right. Because yeah. Because once we have all three, we can have really much smoother video playback. That's the like if you're on the on the Western and well, if you have a good eye for smooth video playback, you see a significant improvement. Oh, good. Nobody will make me run around, so that's good. 